Hello, welcome to Dunkin' Egg Bricks. Today I'm just doing a short video taking a look at the brand new Gringotts that has been unveiled today. I'm sure you've seen uh, approximately 1,000 videos looking at this already, but I thought I'd throw my two galleons in the ring and let you know my thoughts. So I'm here on Brickset.com, which is a great place to find Lego news and reviews and things. It was on a few other places, including Promo Bricks and Instagram before that, uh, but I thought I'd go on here because they've always got the good quality pictures. So here is set number 76. 417 Gringotts Wizarding Bank Collector's Edition, uh, which is a very long way of saying this is Gringotts, and this is a pretty expensive 18 plus set, 4,803 pieces for here in the UK, £370, uh, 430 American dollars and 430 euros is the kind of base price that we're looking at. And uh, just look at the main picture here. What a completely ridiculous set. Uh, I don't think until the leaks came out in the last few days, anybody was expecting the set to look like this. Uh, there was talk about having the minecart system, as well as the uh, Diagon Alley compatible Gringotts, uh, but I don't think anyone quite believed it was going to be like this. Um, yeah, really intrigued to see this in hand and just see how stable it is. But, uh, you know, presumably it's stable enough to pass the test. So let's go down and have a look at some details of this set. So it's going to be available from the 1st of September, which, uh, you know, makes sense with a Harry Potter set. It's going to include 13 minifigs, including a couple of versions of Harry, one from Deathly Hallows and one from Philosopher's Stone. Hagrid, uh, well... It <laughs> It lists Dragomir, Despard, and Ron Weasley uh, separately here, but they are the same figure. Same with Bellatrix and Hermione. And then Grip Hook, Grip Hook Bogrod, Ripbert, uh, three goblins, two more, so five goblins total, a Death Eater, and two Gringotts guards. Also comes with the Ukrainian Iron Belly Dragon. So, um, yeah, a crazy set, um, something that people have been asking for for quite a while now to go with Diagon Alley, of course. Uh, I reviewed that set a little while ago. I'll put a link in the description down to that review. Absolutely great set. And uh, yeah, we've been asking for some additions to it for a while. And this is one of them. Of course, we're still missing things like the Leaky Cauldron and a bunch of other shops from Diagon Alley, but this is a start. Um, and I bet that Lego or the Lego designers were kicking themselves that they designed the Diagon Alley set with base plates rather than normal plates, because it means when it came to this set, if they wanted to make it compatible, they had to have a base plate, which of course doesn't have any connections underneath, and make it so it could balance on this ridiculous structure, uh, which looks like it uses these toe ball connectors and then these corner panels in order to keep it in place. So we'll take a look at some of the details, but let's look at the actual building itself first. Might be zooming in a little bit too much here, but we can see the details. There's the dragon on the top. It uses a brand new molded head by the looks of it, and then a brick built body. Not the biggest fan of the body. It looks okay, um, but I'm sure some mockers can come up with something a bit better based on that head. Also love these cloth wings that match the Hungarian horn tail that came out uh, relatively recently, the kind of mechanical one with the flapping wings and that looks great perched on top of the dome there uh, i have to say uh, the, the design with these uh, studs on the sides the tiles and slopes isn't exactly what i was expecting uh, it's not 100 percent accurate but i do know what they were going for the kind of courses of stone um the one thing that does surprise me is the kind of blandness of this section at the top here i think these are those new um quarter circle panels that were used on the recent UCS X-Wing, now recolored in white, I think that's what they are. Um, it gets the shape across, but I was actually wondering if they were going to use a similar technique to the one used in the boutique hotel. Um, when that came out with the dome on top and the kind of angled walls, it just screamed Gringotts to me. Um, obviously they don't want to reuse techniques too much, but uh, no, interesting way they've got these columns here using these um, kind of accessory or power blast holder pieces clipped in, and it's the same um, on the lower floor as well. Middle floor is vertical. A uh, little bit of an unfortunate gap between the uh, stickers on different pieces here. Gringot Bank. Um, so that's a shame. Um, but maybe you can position the stickers a bit more strategically or possibly even just cut tiny slivers off them there to make them a bit closer. I don't know if I'm going to dare to do that. And then down at ground level, we've got a bit of kind of wall extension here. Um, 
This is a little bit odd. I'm interested to see what it looks like on the other side, but obviously it's a way that you can have people come through here if you want to put the other buildings of diagonally out here, or you can fix it here with a Technic brick. So this is on a 32 by 32 base plate, um, which is unlike the Diagon Alley set, which was on 16 by 32, so a bit more flexible there. Um, as well as Gringotts, we've got the Magical Menagerie, which is just a tiny, tiny sliver of a building off to the side. You can see there's a uh, Pygmy Puff outside, a frog, a couple of snakes in a barrel. That looks like an unprinted kitten as a sign, which is nice. <laughs> a couple of nice stickers here, one advertising a Junior Wizard savings account with Gringotts. Um, so yeah, that is the general outside. Let's scroll down. Here is the inside, including the uh, stack down below, but we'll focus on that in a second. So we've basically got two rooms inside Gringotts. Up above, it's pretty empty, just looks like a kind of, I don't know, uh, back office kind of thing, um, with a, a single goblin working at a desk, and then some gold bars and a chest, like the uh, slanting window that looks very nice. I've got a bit of a glass roof on top of there as well. And then below we've got the main banking hall, um, which I believe in the first film was a real location. Um, it was uh, somewhere in the city of London, I think. And then in the uh, later film, so in Deathly Hallows Part 2, it was a set, which is now at the uh, Warner Brothers Studios tour. This looks pretty decent. Um, on first glance, I thought it looked very, very small, and uh, it is actually bigger than it looks. This desk here is removable, and then there's a much bigger hallway inside with these uh, teller's desks off to the side. Nice detailing here for the marble, although I'm going to assume that those are stickers. Um, in fact, some of them you can see that they are stickers, which is good. They're not, um, you know, not trying to slip anything by us there, which is nice. Cool chandelier using those uh, more recent 4x4 domed or rounded brick pieces. And then moving on downwards, we get our first good look at the minecart system, which is using the modern roller coaster tracks in, by the looks of it, either dark grey or pearl dark grey. Not 100% sure. Um, there is no direct connection between the bank building and the downstairs, although I suppose the idea is that you come off maybe here and you end up at this door here. Makes sense because this needs to come off. And you start the cart at the top, I think you only get one in the set, and then it can roll down and there are a couple of places you can stop it. They've got these kind of signals which will presumably block the way and stop it. Um, yeah, it's just a single uh, roller coaster cart in reddish brown with some extra bits on the outside to simulate those larger wheels. We get, I believe, three vaults. So here's the entrance. This, I think, is Harry's vault up here. This is vault 713, where the Philosopher's Stone is hidden. And then at the bottom, we also get the Lestrange's vault, which is around the back there. Uh, love this detail here of the feeding schedule for the dragon and a skull of someone who uh, probably was a, a little unfortunate and didn't feed the dragon on time. And there's another view of the uh, Ukrainian Iron Belly. Here, again, is the uh, hall. You get a better idea of the inside. These are renders rather than actual uh, photos, although there are some later down uh, in the... Um, in the set page. Uh, let's move on down. Yeah, here's a better view at, uh, I think this must be the Lestrange's Vault, and so that will be the, I suppose that's meant to be the Cup of Hufflepuff, although it should have handles, but there we are. Um, love the new variations in colour we get on the Goblin hairpiece. Now if I just go on to the actual page, you'll see we get the typical lifestyle images as well. Um, doesn't appear to be in a concrete bunker this time, which is nice. Uh, that's not the best quality. Let's find a better one. Ah, this is a good one here. So this shows one way that you can combine it with the rest of Diagon Alley, um, which makes it for an interesting configuration because it's, um, you know, it kind of a, does a, I don't know what you call it. Uh, it's just a bit jagged. It's not one straight line as it should be. Um, but it looks all right. Yeah, the Magical Menagerie is a little bit smaller, um, but maybe with a little bit of modern, you can make that fit in. And Gringotts is taller than um, the top half of quality Quidditch supplies, which it really ought to be. Probably should be a little bit bigger, but the scale of Diagon Alley is actually quite large in order to get in all those details. Uh, here's a better look at the figures that comes with it. So there's a young Harry, very similar to ones we've had before, a new face print, I think. Same Hagrid we've been getting for a while. Deathly Hallows Harry, Ron with his Dragomir Despard Polyjuice disguise, Hermione with Bellatrix disguise, Griphook, and then um, I don't know exactly which names apply to which goblins here, a Death Eater with that looks like a brand new Death Eater uh, mask face print, which is great, and then two of those guards, which look good as well. Ah, here's a good lifestyle picture. 
There we go, we get a better look at it that way. Um, yeah, it looks really nice. I'll be really interested to see as the reviews start coming out what this looks like in hand and people's views on it as well. I actually quite like how it looks from this angle as well, which is nice. Um, the price. So, as I said at the beginning, in the UK this is going to cost £370, which is a lot of money. Uh, it is a lot of pieces, but considering that most people were basically just wanting this half, is this half worth the extra price? Um, I don't know yet. Like I said, I'm going to wait until I start to see some reviews in hand. Um, I really like both sections, but I also like the suggestion that a couple of people put forward um, of having it as two separate sets. So you have this at, you know, 200 and whatever, 200, let's call it 230 pounds, um, you know, 200 ish. So it's kind of like a modular building on a base plate probably the same number of pieces, and then this is an add-on. The trouble is, I don't think this would sell as well. Um, so maybe that's a reason why they've gone for it, although, as people like to point out, the price points are arranged first before the actual sets are designed. But this does look like a lot of fun, and, um, you know, we've not really got a proper representation of the Gringotts vaults before. There is one other specifically Gringotts set, um, excluding that previous Diagon Alley set from 2011 or whenever it was, um, and that was a very early set from about 2002. Very basic, just a couple of bits of rail, and I do have that set and had a lot of fun with it at the time. Um, but yeah, this is a, a big, big improvement. So yeah, that is Gringotts. We've been waiting for it for quite a while. I'm really, really excited to get it. I am going to get it. Um, you know, I'm going to try and either camp out on September the 1st or order it on September the 1st um, because I, I need to have it for my collection. But uh, yeah, it remains to be seen how the uh, how the value is on this. So thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this set. Will you be getting it? And uh, yeah, whether you think that this is a, a worthwhile addition to the Lego Harry Potter world. Thank you for listening to my ramblings. Uh, normal programming will resume. I've got a couple of Hogwarts updates coming out very soon, which I've got all the pieces for, which is nice. But obviously this coming out did mean that I had to make this my priority. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the channel and uh, like to see future things, please subscribe, give the video a like, comment, um, go support me on Patreon, all the good things. And I will see you again very soon.